Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beret and in this video we're going to learn how to play Even Fall from Nanox Games. To set the game up, place these three regions on the table, ideally one below the other, starting with the northern lakes, then continuing with central mountains, and then the southern slopes. You need some space above each of those boards, so to fit them all in the camera angle, let me arrange them on the table like this. Make sure you use the side of these boards that corresponds to the current player count. This one is for a 1-3 to three player game, the other side for a 4 player game. I'm demonstrating a 3 player game, so I will use this side. In a 2 player game, the southern slopes are not used at all. Then place this victory point track and the mana track nearby. Place the round marker in the first space of the round track and take one victory tile per player and place it on this space, which is called the throne. Shuffle these places of power to form a draw deck, and for each region draw the number of cards indicated by these illustrations. Place these cards face up and keep the draw deck above the mana track. Then shuffle the rituals and specialists, those are the cards with this back, create the draw deck and place it above the mana track, and leave some space nearby for the discard pile. Shuffle all these power stones and randomly distribute them face up on these designated spaces on the region board. Any remaining power stones can be returned back to the box. Then place this first player marker somewhere here in the Northern Lakes region. Then create the general supply of herbs, potions and knowledge and catalysts and place them nearby. By the way, these trays don't come with the game. Then each player chooses one player board and before you start up the game, collectively decide whether you're going to use this sun side of the board or the moon side. For your first couple of games, it's recommended to use this sun side. However, in order to show you all the options, let me use this moon side of the player board because this moon side has special abilities for each player. After you choose the player board, take the clan token, and again if you play with the moon side, take the moon clan token, otherwise you would take this sun clan token, and then place this clan token face up in this space of your player board. Each clan has a name, and you have to place the starting place of the corresponding clan, you can see the name on the card as well. The place goes in this inner circle area, again with the moon side face up if you play with the moon side of the player board. This area is called the outer circle, this is the place for your specialists and here you will have your council members. Then take four witches and place them in this area on your player board and four elders who are placed in this area. This is called your reserve. Then take four of your markers and place one of them in the lowest space of this Covena track. And then the remaining three are placed on this Mana track and the Victory Point track. You also receive this Mana dial in your color and three herbs and three potions as your starting resources. Randomly choose the starting player who will receive this first player marker and with that you're ready to start the game. In Evenfall, each player takes control of a powerful clan of witches aspiring to ascend to this magic throne from where you will lead a world into a new era. The game is played over three rounds and each round has four phases. The first phase is the scout phase in which players collect resources, draw new cards and gain mana. Then the second phase is the action phase where players take turns, and on your turn you have to choose one of the five main actions. You may discover a new place of power, which means you can take this card and add it to your tableau into this outer area, and this tableau is called a coven. Or you can activate your clan token and perform the harvest and gain resources from the places of power in the outer circle, 
You may play a card from your hand, either as a special list in this area, or a ritual in the outer circle, or as the council member at the bottom of your player board. You can also activate these action spaces, either in your coven or in the regions, or you can build these catalysts which provide bonuses to your actions. Once you have no more actions available you pass and when all players pass proceed to the battle phase. In the battle phase players will battle in each region and they will gain these bonuses, they will gain these power stones based on how many pieces they have in the region and how much mana they spend. And finally in the fourth phase, the end of the round phase, players perform the cleanup. The game ends at the end of round three. And in addition to the victory points you score over the course of the game, you score victory points from your specialists, from your rituals, which are in this inner circle, not in this outer circle, and also from the council members. And then the player with the most victory points is the winner. The first phase of each round is the scout phase, in which players gain cards, resources, and mana or victory points, based on these symbols on their player board. In this example you would gain 5 cards, 3 knowledge and 2 mana. When gaining mana, move your marker on this mana track. When gaining cards, draw the indicated number of cards from the draw deck. And when you gain resources, take them from the general supply. Keep the cards in your hand and keep them secret from other players. And by the way, all players can perform this phase simultaneously. Then, during the action phase, players take turns, starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise, and on your turn, you must perform one main action. You have them listed on your player 8, and I will go through them in a minute. You can perform any number of free actions, that is exchanging cards for resources, and then it's the next player's turn. If you don't want to, or you cannot perform any of those actions, you must pass, and you may no longer perform any actions this round. There are five main actions available. With the first one, you may discover these places of power. With the second one, you may activate your clan token and get bonuses. With the third action, you will be able to play the card from your hand into your play area. The fourth action would allow you to use the action space either on your player board, which is a special action, or action spaces in the regions. And with the last action you will be able to build these catalysts. Before you play this main action, you may perform any number of free actions and as a free action you may discard two cards from your hand to gain any one resource. Those resources are herbs, potions or knowledge. Now I'm going to cover all those five main actions in the game and we will start with discovering a place of power. With this main action you will be able to take a card, the place of power from any region. You will then add the card to your clan. With those cards you will be able to harvest resources, mana, cards and so on. And they are required to play rituals. To discover a place of power choose any available card in any region. Then take this indicated number of witches from your reserve. Here it's two witches and place these witches in this space of the region and then you can take the card and place it in the outer circle of your play area which is this area. Cards in this outer circle can be harvested for resources, however they don't score any victory points. To do that you will have to move them to the inner circle, however the cards in the inner circle cannot be harvested. With the second main action, you may activate your clan token. When you do, announce it to other players because it may trigger some game effect, then perform all the effects on that token, and then flip it to the exhausted side. In this example, this is the symbol for harvest, which means you harvest all the cards in your outer circle with the harvest symbol. So here you would gain one potion, one card, and two mana. Then you can perform the second effect and after that flip the token to the exhausted side. If you play with the sun side of the player board, all these clan tokens are the same. 
When you activate it, you may perform the harvest and then you take one additional herb and one additional potion. And again, you would flip the token to the exhausted side. The reason why you have to flip it to the exhausted side is the fact that you may only activate your clan token once per round. The third action is playing a card and you can play a ritual, a specialist or a council member. So let's start with rituals. To play a ritual, first choose one of the ritual cards from your hand, the ritual is one of the keywords directly on the card, then pay the cost indicated in the top left hand corner of the card, and then place it on any place of power which doesn't have a ritual yet. Each place of power has a space exactly for one ritual. When you place the ritual on the place of power, slightly offset it so that both of the cards are visible. There are three types of rituals in the game. These ones give you immediate effect which you carry out after playing the ritual. These ones provide ongoing effects and these provide additional action space which you can use later in the game. Some places of power have this binding bonus. It is triggered as soon as the ritual is played on that card. This one gives you one potion, and if that ritual has this familiar keyword, you would also score two victory points. That familiar keyword is also located on the card in this area. To play a specialist card, play it from your hand, the specialist keyword is located here, pay the cost, here it's two herbs and one potion, and from this moment on the effect of the card is active. Again, this is a permanent effect. This type of effect indicates a free action, which means on your turn you may tap the card and carry out the effect on the card. And finally, this type of symbol is activated during the battle phase. There are always two copies of each card in the game. However, you may never play the second copy of the same card. To play your specialist card as a council member, you have to slide the card underneath your player board. The cost is shown at the bottom of your player board, so for the first card it's one knowledge, one herb and one potion. For the second card and all other subsequent cards you would have to pay two knowledge, two herbs and two potion. That's specific for this player board. And again there are three types of these effects on the council members. Some of them are activated at the end of the game, some are activated at the end of the round, and other effects are permanent. The fourth type of the main action is the game is activating an action space. Action spaces are these spaces, you can find them on rituals, sometimes on your clan board, and they can be found in the regions. You activate these action spaces with your witches or with your elders. However, elders can only activate action spaces in your inner circle. Witches can activate any action space. To activate an action space, place the witch or an elder on the action space and then carry out the effect. Obviously the same applies for the action spaces in the regions. Sometimes to take the effect you have to pay something and then here is the benefit. So for example you have to discard a card from your hand and then you gain any three resources. And again each action space can only be occupied by one witch or elder. That also applies to the action spaces in the regions. They can only be occupied by one piece. When you activate this symbol you may do the transfer. This action space allows you to take three cards or take two cards and perform that transfer. With the transfer you may transfer one place of power from your outer circle to your inner circle. You transfer that place of power with all the rituals, with all the witches and potentially any tokens. Remember, only the rituals in your inner circle would score victory points at the end of the game. On the other hand, you may not harvest them, but if there are any action spaces, you can use elders to activate those action spaces in your inner circle, which means you can use your witches to activate other action spaces. And finally, the fifth main action is to build a catalyst. 
With this action you may build any number of these catalysts and you place these catalysts on these spaces on rituals. This card can hold one catalyst token, this one can hold two catalyst tokens and to place a scythe token you have to pay one herb. In order to place an orb you have to spend two potions and as I said you can build any number of catalysts during the same action. So for example here let's place these two scythe tokens on this ritual and we can place this orb on the ritual down here. All the spent resources are returned to the general supply. For each orb you build advance one space on this coven track and immediately receive the bonus on the space. If you move multiple steps on the coven track during the same action you get all those indicated bonuses. When you reach the end of this track every time you would have to move one space further you would gain two victory points. Each side token copies the harvest bonus from the same place of power so whenever you perform the harvest in this example instead of two mana you would receive two four six mana. When all players pass in the action phase the game proceeds to the next phase which is the battle phase. During this phase players will battle for these bonuses and for the power stones in each region. The first battle takes place in the northern lakes, the second one in the central mountains and then the last one in the southern slopes. So you go from north through central to the south. Before each battle check if any player has this symbol on their cards. These are activated during the battle phase. All players with at least one piece in that region automatically participate in the battle. Usually players will only have witches in the region with some special game effects they may also have elders. Then all players participating in a battle take their mana dials and secretly determine how much mana they want to spend. They can only spend as much mana as they have currently and when all players are done they simultaneously reveal their choices. First subtract the corresponding number of mana on the mana track that is obviously the amount of mana each player spent during this action or during this battle and then determine who has the highest combat strength. The combat strength is the sum of your witches or elders in the region plus your mana. So in case of this black player it's 2 plus 6, 8. The combat strength of the red player is 6, blue player has 4. Now based on this combat strength players will gain rewards from the region. In order to gain a reward your combat strength must be equal or higher to the number next to that reward. So for example the blue player has the combat strength of 4 so blue player would draw one card. However the red player has a combat strength of 6 which means red player gains both of these bonuses and the black player having the combat strength of 8 would gain all three bonuses. Then the player with the highest combat strength may take any one power stone from the region and place it in their clan. And you can place it on one of the cards immediately or keep it in your reserve because these power stones are placed on your power of places during the final scoring. If the power stone matches the icon on the place of power during the final scoring that doubles the victory points from that ritual. In case of a tie here let's say the red player would spend 7 mana. Both the red player and the black player would have the combat strength of 8. The player who spent more mana would take the power stone. If there still was a tie then the first player in a player order would win that tie. One last note, the player who wins the battle in these northern lakes would also take the first player marker for the next round. Once the battle in the first region is completed proceed to the battle in the next region. If only one player is present in a region that player automatically wins the battle and may take one of the power stones. However in order to gain any of these rewards the player still has to spend mana and if there are no players with any pieces in the region 
the battle doesn't take place. When all battles are completed, proceed to the last phase of the round, which is the end of the round phase. This is a very simple cleanup phase. First, activate all the round end effects, then return all your elders and witches back to your reserve, replenish the regions with the new cards from the draw deck, then move the round marker to the next space, flip your clan token back to the ready side and if you have any cards tapped, return them back to the upright position. Then you can begin a new round with the scout phase. At the end of the third round, in addition to the round end effects, activate also all the end game effects and then proceed to final scoring. Before the final scoring, you can discard all the remaining cards in your hand and also all the remaining resources. Then you may place the power stones on the rituals in the inner circle. Each ritual can only have one power stone and if the power stone matches at least one of the icons on the place of power, the victory points of that ritual will be doubled. Now, count up all the victory points on your special list. Those victory points are here in this black square. You get the victory points from your rituals, again from this black circle, those victory points are doubled if you have that power stone there, the matching power stone. Don't forget to count the victory points from the places of power if they are depicted on the card. And just to remind you, you only count victory points from rituals in the inner circle. If you still have any rituals in the outer circle, they are not worth any victory points. Then the player with the most victory points is the winner. So that's how you play even fall. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching Game in the Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash